I'm Wesley Hunt. I'm Rendon Hunt. And you're, you're in, in the hunt. hunt. There's so much going on <laughs> this Man. week. It's like, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to begin. It, it's well, just... first, first, we'll start with you, Sundown. Got your got your glasses there, ready to ready to fly. <laughs> I actually didn't. Even, I actually forgot I have my glasses on. And you know what? You're, I'm not going to let you make me feel insecure about it. So I'm going to leave Someone it on. Leave it there. <laughs> remember, by the way, remember how how crazy was that? That the only black fighter pilot in Top Gun's call sign sundown. was Sundown, and we let that go. I say we just cancel Top Gun Two because of that. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> Because Top Gun was too. You look, you look good. That's too down. amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, so should, this episode, you should have, so, should have, you should have had, had, had a Mav. Should have had a Mav. <laughs> I will fire when I am good and ready. <laughs> I tell you. Well, before I know you, we we have a whole lot to talk about. You're absolutely right. But before we jump in, I had a horrible day today. Okay. And you know how rare and then it you is. You saw me. That, that's actually where I'm going with this. You <laughs> are know how? You, are you yeah, absolutely. Okay. You know how rare that is for me to to say that. I had a very re- rare. You never, I had a really bad, you never day. have bad days. I, I, yeah. I very rarely have bad days, and I had a really rough day today. And it was one of those situations where you wish that everybody had the kind of Tylenol that you have in life, right? Yeah. Where I thought, wow, we'll get to come out here, have a good conversation, and hang out, and it'll be the therapy for the day. So yeah. I appreciate you doing this because this has been a a pretty, it's pretty very rare, pretty very crappy rare, day. Very rare you have a rough day. Uh, but this is going to be a pretty good podcast because there has to be some silver lining on this bad of course, boy. Of course. Go Astros. Yeah, go Astros. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to take a little bit of time to talk about, like, you know, what it means to be an Olympian mm. and, and what we're seeing with woke protests at the Olympics. Woke test? Woke it, in in twenty in twenty twenty one, yeah, as as if this is the sixties and seventies, because it's just not. No, and the women's soccer team a couple of days ago, um, obviously the national anthem is playing. There are some of the young ladies that are standing, and most of them, many of them, are taking a knee during the national anthem as they're representing the United States on the world scale. Yeah, and they proceeded to get dusted three to zero after. They decided to protest the national anthem, which I found to be hilarious. Okay? Well, they're protesting by not scoring. <laughs> they're not going to score a goal in protest until we see change. <laughs> well, they're well on their way. They're well on their way. And the reason why, and clearly our women's soccer program is the best, one of the best in the world. Awesome. And we, and we always have been. And the, the reason why we're going to have an issue is because you and I have both played on teams. You and I have both participated in sports. You do things as a team. You do things together. So if you can't even decide whether or not you're all going to stand for the national anthem, you're starting off on the wrong foot. Don't tell me that, you know, um, yeah, you know, guess what? You know, I respect my teammates' decision to do this. It's not my choice, but it's theirs. And and if you don't think that that's going to bleed over and permeate into your actual team chemistry, you're wrong, and you've never played on a team in your life. Wow. If you can't start off by deciding we're going to run out the tunnel the same way, we're all going to touch this, we're going to touch the same sign. We have the same uniform. We're wearing the same color helmets, shoes, etc. We are a uniform team. It starts off with that mental psyche. If you can't even decide to stand for the national anthem on the world scale, guess what? You're going to get roasted because your team is already psychologically divided. Wow. You're starting off on, on, on you're starting off on a on a divided foot, wow. and the back of your teammates' mind at some point, you ain't on the same page. That's a wonderful point. I've never thought of it, thought about it like that. Yeah. I took a little bit different of a take, but it's 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 in the similar vein. Yeah. The issues that you've seen me have with a lot of athletes are off the field issues. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, he's a really good guy, a really good teammate, but it's off the field issues. You see, off the field stuff becomes on the field field stuff. So I, I, 
I like how you how you frame that because I hadn't thought about it from the perspective of everybody being on the same page and and actually doing things as a cohesive yes, as unit a team. The way that I thought about it actually was there's so much focus on other things that it distracts oh. you from thinking about the mission of oh. winning the game. Like if I'm spending time choreographing the the dance that I'm going to do in protest yes. during the national anthem, yes. that's time that I'm not spending. And that's moments before the game, which is the most important time to get focused on what's getting ready to happen yes. next. And you're not focused on that. Yes. You're and, focused on protest. And this is at the elite level. Yeah. Did you get that that thing I sent you about Brian Scalabrini? I sent it to you a couple of days. I'll give you an overview of it. You got to watch this because you would love it. I missed it. So Scalabrini, who used to play for the Boston Celtics, yeah. paid for like 12 years in, yeah. in the I, NBA. I know yeah, yeah. The White Mamba. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Scalabrini. <laughs> <laughs> I, before, I mean, I watched when he was playing with the Celtics. I was living in Boston at the time, and I've always liked the Celtics. Yeah. And so I paid attention to him on that championship team. But what he's been doing since then is fascinating. Okay. Because he has this challenge where he challenges – Anybody to play him in one on one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he's he absolutely he dusts everybody. Destroys these yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, he dusts everybody. He yeah. absolutely destroys yeah. these people. And they had him. I, I sent you this clip where it basically was him talking about why he does that. And he's basically like, "Look, if you haven't played in the NBA, yeah, it's because you're not good enough to play in the NBA." Yeah. And he said, when I've played with these guys, you might think I'm slow. You might not think I'm that strong. But you're comparing me. But you're compa he said, I suck compared to LeBron James. I don't suck compared to you. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I'm closer to LeBron Just James than you are to me. That's what he's telling these people. And these guys, high-flying high school players, oh, let me play you. And he's beating these guys 11 to nothing. <laughs> and he hasn't been in the league for a while. That's awesome. And he gets a point where, you know, if, if they score yeah. one or two points, he's like, I can get all your tells. I understand what you're doing. I get your pump fakes. He's like, I can't, I can't afford to not see those things and play in the NBA because I'm not the most athletic guy. So I know those tells and I can see those tells. Yeah. The reason I bring that up right now point. These people are playing at an elite level. Yeah. At the highest level. If you're playing at the highest level of anything, you can't afford to have a lapse in thinking or judgment or memory Whoa. while you're thinking about, well, what am I going to do when the anthem plays? And what am Whoa. I going to do? You got to be dialed in and focused on what you're doing because you're playing against the best. Whoa. And when you're playing against the best, you better be focused on doing the best. Whoa. And that's how you have a world class best team in the world get dusted that gets beat 3 to 0 3 to nothing they're still the most talented best team in the world they're not focused clearly and clearly. maybe like, and here's the thing might not just be the anthem maybe what? it's oh, maybe it's covid Who maybe knows? it's 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 a number of other things so these, a, these these olympics are, are are odd or weird right now anyway more than weird yeah, okay it's our, it, these olympics are already a bust it, yesterday was the opening day i had no idea yeah. what since when in our lifetime oh, man. have we had an opening day for the Olympics? And I didn't know. This is our like favorite time of of, of every four years. You, it used to be. Yeah. It was. And I, I would say this that I think is really interesting. We've seen all the coverage in the Wall Street Journal, other papers, about the $20 billion bust that is this Olympics. Yes. About Toyota pulling the scholar, pulling a... Yeah. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pulling uh, ad money yeah, from the, endorsement, from the, the Olympics endorsement, endorsement money. Yeah. Um, we've seen Toyota do that. We've seen other companies do it. We see the Japanese pe Japanese people do not want to have th this, this Olympics, Olympics there in Tokyo. They don't. They don't want to have it. They don't want to do it. And I found it being really, being really interesting because we'll see how history tells this story. Okay. But there is a piece of me that applauds and appreciates the courage of the Japanese Prime Minister to move forward with this. Yeah. Is it the most popular thing to do? No. No, it's not. Do I like the opportunity that some of these athletes who have been priming their bodies to do this for have, years and years them, and years, them, and compete. this is the only opportunity they get to you do it? Compete. There's going to be people who can't compete because of COVID, positive tests, and things of that sort. Yeah. There, there's going to be a lot of that. But there is a piece of me, and once again, I say this not knowing what call I would make if I were in his position. Yeah. Because he's getting a lot of pressure from everywhere. Yeah. But I can appreciate the fact that 
look, we committed to this. We're on the world stage. It's not what any of us thought it was going to be. We're not going to make the money that we're going to make. But, but we said we we're going to do it, so we're going to do let's it. Let's push forward. I, I, I like that. There's a piece of that, that that I can really appreciate. A lot of respect for. Yeah. And what would any Olympic conversation be without my favorite third place <laughs> hammer throwing female, Gwen Berry? <laughs> So, <sighs> so what's been revealed now is that Gwen Berry has had a bit of a history of sending highly offensive, racially insensitive tweets. Mm-hmm. The thing that I think it's important for our listener to understand and and understand about the way that we view the world. When you put yourself out there, you're putting your whole self out there. When you decided to run for public office, that's it. Everything that you've said and done leading up to that, it's fair game. It's fair game. And we have to be really careful as a country And we have to be really careful as individual communities of who we listen to and who we prop up for leadership positions. If you're Puma, you have to be really careful with who you give endorsement deals, and you should probably do a little bit of back checking about the type of person that you want to endorse. Mm -hmm. When people are beating from the top of every mountain, I support this person X, Y, Z, you should really understand the person who you're supporting. Because I have a problem with wholeheartedly supporting anybody that says, shout out to all the females that's going to get drunk, get wrecked by four dudes, then cry rape this weekend. Whoa. It's a quote from Gwen Berry's tweets. Okay. I have a hard time supporting somebody who in jest says, I'm about to rape my lunch. Okay. I have a hard time supporting somebody saying, just saw this girl wearing heels with white socks. What the hell? Hashtag Chinese people. Wow. Wow. I have a hard time supporting someone who says, Mexicans just don't care about people. My mother-in-law is Mm Mexican-American. My wife is half Mexican. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time (laughs) with somebody who says, this little white boy being bad as hell, I would smack his ass and then stomp him. Hashtag white people kids. Mm -hmm. So this is somebody who is trivializing rape. Mm Mm-hmm making highly racially insensitive comments. But yet protesting for racial injustice. And trivializing... Cool story. Child abuse. Cool story. Cool messenger. Yeah. Okay. Is, 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 is this who... This, this, this who, who we, we want collectively to want... This is who we want to follow. As a spokesperson yeah. for racial injustice. The person who's perpetuating it themselves. Which brings me to another tweet that, um, that old Megan Rapino had. 10 years ago. By the way, if you want to cancel people, I mean, this is the world that we live in. And if you're the woke left, this is, you have to understand that when the woke left people also say stuff 10 years ago, then they're fair game to get canceled. Yeah. These are not our rules, by the way. These are and Wesley, these are their rules. You never heard me say anything about canceling her. No, not at all. I just think you have to hold people accountable no. who so, are spokespeople for movements. Megan Rapino, the one, the one on the soccer team, the Pied Piper of them all, she's the one that made a tweet referring to another teammate, saying basically um, that her she had an expression on her face. It goes somewhere along the lines of, um, when you make that face, when you have your eyes like that, you look Asian. Huh? Now, this player is part Asian, by the way, but the, who, she, who she was referring to. But, I mean, this is the person that doesn't want to stand for the country for her country to for it to, to stop racial injustice and th- these are the kind of comments that, that you've made now look it, it, 
it's, so, it's 10 years ago. It's one thing. Okay. And you and I are on the same page. Like, I'm, I don't want to cancel anybody. It's, I'm willing to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. If it was 10 years ago, we have all evolved and changed over time. I get it. But these are your rules. You would talk about insensitive. It's a pretty insensitive thing to do. Yeah. And this is why you want to talk about being Pied Pipers. This is why I've always been the Pied Piper for change starts with us. It's real convenient and easy to talk about kneeling and, and, and standing and all these types of things. Oh, no, 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 no. What are you doing in your own life to help solve the problems of this world? Mm -hmm. We talk about this all the time with, with latte liberals yeah. talking at black people. Yeah. Right. We talk about this all the time. Like that's that's great that you think that we should have a more just society in so many different ways. Cool. And I'm also confused how you believe that and don't have any black friends. <laughs> and I'm also confused about how you not believe that. Not a single that black person lives in your neighborhood. And, and are not your willing kids, to Your to kids don't go to school with, with black people. You you go to all you go to all white church. You you you, you spend your entire life around no, not even brown people. Period. They're all white people. Yeah. And the couple black guys that you know went to Harvard Business School in Cornell, so that makes you woke enough to have black friends because you want to invite them out for a drink. <laughs> So that's a, so that's we keep, a, so we keep, that's the game we're playing. We keep bringing this up. We've brought it up a few times. You and I have been to many a wedding. Some of these woke-minded people. We've been at their weddings. There were there were four black people there. Had the same last name. Yeah. Out of two hundred people, all hunt. But but you're all woke, and you all you know all about the black community and the you know all about the struggle. Yeah. And you know about CRT and how what are you, how are we going to do our part? Oh okay, okay. <sighs> Okay. We've been there. Be careful. Be careful with who's saying that. Yes. Another person that really kind of gets on me is Beto O'Rourke. Mm. And his messaging, too, along these lines. Be very careful with the person that may know a lot about black history. You know where he lives? Do you know where his kids, you know where his kids go, to, go, to, go to school? Do you know who he married into? Do you know how much money he's worth? He's not around black people. Be very careful with the messengers here. He's not in the black community. Yeah. He has no idea. Yeah. And that's the thing, talking at you rather the, than it, speaking absolutely. with you. Absolutely. You see, people like, they don't want to hear people like us talk. No. Okay, because, and then we get shunned off to the side as yeah. if our blackness and stops mattering. Yeah. Because it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, and we don't agree with that narrative. Yeah. We don't fit that narrative. Yeah. It's real uncomfortable. Yeah. But along, along these lines, too, as you know, I'm, I'm an F1 guy. I've been watching. Yeah. Form, I've been watching Formula One for the last couple of years. Been following it pretty closely, and the best driver of all time is Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, and he's he's from he's from he's British. He's from Britain. Yeah. British. He's British. He's British. Yeah, it's our and favorite place, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's, yeah. he's a British bloke. He's British. Yeah. yeah, and he just he's won a wee bloke. He's the, a wee bloke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just won the Grand Prix that was just in Britain. His his, his home soil. I would consider him to be another social justice warrior in his own right. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. But but he's kind of taken on that mantle of equality. Yeah. Okay. And he talks in depth. Do you like Lewis Hamilton? And he talks in depth about <laughs> he talks. Have, you, have you canceled him yet? <laughs> I'm just asking. I don't dislike him. <laughs> <laughs> It's a double negative there. I like that. Brendan, but I don't dislike it. It's like it's like it's like this. You know, he talks a lot about his struggles being a biracial kid, yeah. by the way, in Israel, and talks about the racism that he's experienced sure. or seen. As we have talked about, let me tell you something. It's way more racist in these other countries oh. than it is here here in the United States. Way more racist. Yeah. It's way worse. Yeah. Okay? It's way worse in different places than it is here. And I don't understand where he's coming from. I don't necessarily agree with his approach, but I understand where he's coming from. If I were him, I would take more of the approach of, in spite of all that, I am the best driver of all time. He, he, will, he will leave the game past Michael Schumacher. He'll be the best driver of all time. In spite of all of that, 
being from Britain that is predominantly white. And by the way, if you watch the Grand Prix like I did, everybody in the stands that was just supporting him, waving him, waving his flag, I'll tell you something, they're all white people. Yeah. They love him. Yeah. And I would take that opportunity to say, you know, in spite of it all, look at look at the good that I, that we've been able to have. So let's, let's kind of like LeBron James. Yeah. Somebody spray paints some some profanity and some racial slur yeah. in front of his home, and he says his first words are, well, I can't believe this is still happening in 2019 or 2020, instead of being like, that's just one idiot. Yeah. When I go play basketball and I look at sold-out arenas that are filled with white people buying my shoes, eating the food at the arena that I'm playing at, spending thousands and thousands of dollars to sit courtside to watch me play, guess what? One monkey don't stop, no show. No. That one idiot, that one idiot, that's a one-off. But you know what? This country's pretty doggone yeah. good. I get a lot of support from all walks of life. I mean, millions of people. And millions. And millions. We'll watch Space Jam 2 and be not highly one, disappointed. I'm not one of <laughs> Millions of white people will watch Space Jam 2. Man. And, hey, I'm not, I know no, you're not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch that. Man, I tell you what. I would take the Jordan Toon Squad no, I'm not gonna watch over that. LeBron Toon, Toon Squad in a second. I'm not going to watch that. But, Man, back, but back to Lewis man, Hamilton, right? It wasn't good. So Lewis Hamilton... Lewis Hamilton, in spite of all that he went through, in spite of coming up, you know, in, in the ranks and the racism that, that that he's dealt with and whatnot, he wins the Grand Prix. Yeah. And you wanna know what he does for the next thirty minutes? Gets in his car with a British flag and drives around the track. Wow. Then parks his car in the first place pit row lane, gets out, and does a victory lap on foot, waving the British flag. It's awesome. Okay, it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. What I appreciated about him in that moment is in spite of all the stuff, and in spite of all the racist things that he, he may have encountered in his life, that's his country. He won the race on, his, on, on the soil in which he was born and raised on, and he is proud of it. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to wave this flag because I want to represent the best of us in this country, yeah. not the worst of us. And here's the even. And when I see the, the, the soccer team and Gwen, Barry, and all them, you aren't representing the best of us. <laughs> You're focusing on the worst of us. Yes. And you know what I love about that narrative, too? What I love about that narrative is there's going to be some people that don't like that. Okay? In the UK. And what a thumb in their eye. Oh. I represent the best of you. Ha <laughs> ha. Even those that treated me like crap. What a thumb, what a thumb in your eye. I and, and honestly... And by the way, Brennan, the stands were packed. People were losing their minds. Yes. Wesley, that's the chip that we've lived our whole lives with, that chip on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. There's a piece of me that in everything I do, I want to succeed to almost prove those people who thought it wasn't possible wrong. Yes. Jose Altuve had an unbelievable love, that guy. love, love me some Jose Altuve <laughs> he had an unbelievable quote that I'll paraphrase today somebody had asked Jose Altuve about how he feels about proving different detractors in his life wrong you know you're short and you've you've you're a smaller guy like yeah. how do you feel about proving these people wrong and Jose Altuve as only Jose Altuve can do said I didn't do all this for the people that didn't believe in me I did it for the few. I did it for the ones who did. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. And I need more of that in my life. I really yeah. do. I need more of, I'm not doing this to poke a thumb at a, de at a detractor, somebody who doesn't think I can do it. Because yeah. in many ways, sometimes that's my fuel. Rene, you know, at there, the worst of me, that's my fuel. There, there, was, there was a group text that was revealed to me about basically three people that were just trashing me. <laughs> trashing me. Ad hominem personal attacks. It, it, it was it's it's absolutely disgusting what I what I saw. Yeah, absolutely disgusting. Some of it rooted in some racism, in my opinion. And you know us, we don't play that card. It was absolutely disgusting what I read and what I saw and what was shared to me. Okay, it's just three people. Do you know the same day that that happened online, we had over three hundred individual donations. Wow. Yeah, and you're going to focus on 
those three people, this group text, who are going to dislike you no regardless of what you do. Doesn't matter. I can't make them happy. I will never make them happy. And on the same day that happened, we had 300 individual donations one day. And you shared those the, the, those uh, group texts with me. One of the things, of course, because I got drug into this too, is criticism of political leanings due to the podcast, right? Yes. Which I thought was hilarious because it's like, clearly you don't listen to the stuff that we say. Clearly you don't listen. You made that up. You clearly because are not clearly listening, not listening, listening to, to what the we're saying <laughs> at all. So we're literally, so we should cater our message to the things that we're saying for people that aren't going to listen to us anyway. And are going to make up what they want to make up anyway. It's crazy. This reminds me. Do you remember? And I, I, I preface this with you. Do you remember? I know you remember yes, this. I remember it well. We were having a conversation <laughs> with an individual not to be named about Batman when the movie came out. Okay. Right? <laughs> and this is the one with Heath Ledger, the second best Joker of all time. Yes. Nobody beats Jack. Nobody beats Jack. Period. Have, have you ever danced with the devil in the, the pale, pale moonlight? moonlight? <laughs> Dude, nobody beats Jack. Nobody beats Jack. You want to get nuts? Come on. Come on. Let's get nuts. Let's get nuts. Okay. Michael Keaton, the greatest Batman of all time, yeah, by the way. It's not even close. It's not, stop. Yeah, it's not even close. <laughs> so, <laughs> Christian Bale. Come on. Who sent you? <laughs> Where are you? Those are some nice glasses, Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, we were having a conversation. It was right after the Batman movie had come out. And you and I were having a conversation with this individual. And this individual was trying to convince us that the movie was about the Joker, and not about Batman. <laughs> and this individual was incensed. Like, how can you say that? This is about the Joker. This is about the Joker, man. This wasn't even about Batman. He was the main character. <laughs> this conversation went on. Like 15, 20 minutes? For like 15 or 20 minutes. Until you said something that completely changed the tenor of the conversation. You said, so. Wait, wait, wait. Insert name. <laughs> Have you even seen the movie? <laughs> and this individual said, no. <laughs> We're hard to and you're with. like, then what are you even talking about? <laughs> are you for 15, 20 minutes with About somebody? something that you haven't even, even seen. seen. I know. And that's how, that's how you feel with people. Well, I just know what they're going to say about X, Y, Z. Or yeah, I, mean, I just know what they're going to think about X, Y, Z. To it. It's like... The freedom fighting Frederick Douglass, fifty one. <laughs> the saviors of our democracy who yeah. who flew away from their responsibilities in to Texas vote. yeah to hang out in D.C. and and spread COVID yeah <laughs> the, the Delta variant the de but it's the Delta variant you, you, you know but, but they were flying on Delta Airlines that's yeah, why it's funny it, it, actually it's, it's not a joke. It's, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it was a private plane but you know it's a private, it's it's a Delta private, get yeah, it yeah. yeah yeah Delta hubs <laughs> yeah got it. <laughs> So it's, it's like these individuals who they make the assumption, right, that everybody who's following them about voting laws and things like that, they haven't even seen the movie. Yeah. They haven't even read the bill. If you've read the bill, Rendon, if you've read the bill, <laughs> it's not racist. So you've seen. It's not racist. And you pointed this out to me the other day, and I appreciate you pointing this out to me. I wouldn't say that I've come full circle on this issue, but you've yes. I've said I would say that I've done kind of a ninety degree turn. Yes. The reason I say this, <laughs> and this is a beautiful thing about putting out a podcast, or if you're Gwen Berry when you write tweets, it never goes away. Yeah. You can go back in episodes and hear me say this. I have never, ever, ever, ever felt that we should suppress anybody's right to vote. I agree. I have always said that I believe that we need better candidates. I agree. And if we have better candidates, then the people are going to vote for the best candidate that will represent them. Yes, you've always I've said that. I've always been a strong believer always in said this. That. Yes, you have. There was a point when this noise about voter suppression started that I thought, oh my gosh, are we really trying to prevent people from voting? Yeah. Because if we are, we're not hearing the voice to get the best candidates out there. Yes. So I had this period where it's like, is that the case? 
Let me study and do research to oh, figure out if study that and do is research. the case. Oh, study and do research? Because I'm open to Not being wrong. Not just read the headline. I'm open to being study wrong. Study and do research. Oh, this is a Just because idea. I say it doesn't mean it's right. Yeah. I'm open to be wrong, and I am wrong frequently. Yeah. I study, I do research, I read about different voting, voting laws in different states across the country, only to realize this is not a vote about <laughs> restricting the access to, to voting. It's a vote about not making it as convenient as possible, which is somehow racist. That's not racist. And once <laughs> I read that and saw that, I'm kind of like, and once again, I think we're all on the same team and want the same thing. Yeah. If the same thing is, I can tell you very directly what I want. I want better candidates, and I want as many people participating in our democracy as possible. Yes. Well, if that means that you got to go in on a day that's designated to vote, like nobody's restricting you from yeah. participating, go do that. You could do that. And in any way that I personally, Rendon Hunt, can be helpful in you doing that, then great. Rendon, Rendon housekeeping and making sure that everyone's vote counts, and because we need watching, we as humans bear watching, we need to be monitored properly yeah. so that we don't cheat. It, that's the point. That's literally the point of these laws. There's nothing racist about it. Now, now, if the spin is about racism and you don't read the actual bill and you don't look at what we're trying to, what, what's, what's actually been proposed, well, well then you're, you're going to fly off. You're going to fly off the handle yeah. and get on a plane and fly to D.C. and take COVID with you. Yeah. And spread that around yeah. the Delta variant. Yeah. Right? But if you actually read the bill, they, they got on a plane and they're and they're yelling and they're clamoring for for this is injustice and this is full of suppression, and it, that's a lie. It's not. Yeah. Well, and you brought up. At no point is this going to restrict. At no point do I feel any more inconvenienced to figure out how to go vote than a white person or a Hispanic person or an Asian person or anybody else. Yeah. I'm just going to go follow the law. Well, That's not racist. You said something last week that that I'm actually going to blame everything that happened on you because it was very <laughs> prescient the way that, that okay. this all played out. You made a comment last week about the freedom fighting Frederick 51 <laughs> and how they it's take funny every time they take it it's funny every time how they take this picture and none of them have masks on you were like come on like this is you know these are the same people that are incensed especially in the state of Texas about people not wearing their mask and you guys get on a closed <laughs> loop air circulation what a, private jet what a joke without any mask on what a joke. and you made that comment and i was like wow that's pretty you made that comment before we would realize that any of them actually we didn't know they had, had covid, COVID. we didn't even know they had covid right? when i made that comment and so it's so crazy to see how that really played out because there were safety precautions of their standards that they missed. So once again, you know me, I'm a standard person. Yeah. You tell me what the standard is and we're adhere to it. Yes. If there's anything that I don't want to be in this life, it's a hypocrite, man. So now and if I'm the person that's holding the standard that everybody needs to wear a mask to keep people safe and protected. How embarrassing, terrible, irresponsible is it to be a part of the group that is exposing other people unnecessarily because I didn't want to uphold the standard that I set? Wow. Wow. So I read, I read in news today that, that now the freedom fighting Frederick Douglass 51, let's, let's take the D out. So the, the freedom, freedom fighting, fighting Frederick, Frederick 51, because you get, we got to keep it off. You yeah, keep it yeah, off. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the freaking freedom fighting Frederick Douglass 51. Frederick 51. The freaking freedom fighting Fajitos 51. Frederick. Could you imagine Joe Biden saying that? it take 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not young. I got it. <laughs> no, he, the problem we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to hear him because he whispering. <laughs> the freaking freedom fire. Freedom 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 freedom. <laughs> what was that? What? Why are you whispering? Why are you whispering? You have a microphone. Why are you whispering? <laughs> so, again, yet again, and again, not fun, Joe. Um, um, it, they want to meet with Joe Biden. They're upset 
because they've got to meet with the vice president and they've got to meet with other leaders. And now they're upset. The freedom fighting 50, for, for 51. They're upset <laughs> because because they haven't been able to get a meeting with Joe Biden. And, I, and if I'm Joe Biden, I'm like, hell no, I don't want to meet with y'all spreading all this COVID everywhere. Why would I? <laughs> all this malarkey you guys have going around here. <laughs> How ridiculous is it that the team captain of the blue team yeah. is not even willing to meet with players on his team? Right. But literally, this is the team captain of the, of the voting rights team. <laughs> and you like, have people I'm not, not from a state <laughs> that people believe could be a swing state, a, 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 a purple state. Texas is not. Right? Texas is not. But, uh, you have a state that people have, are, are convinced is a swing state. These people come up. Right. People really are convinced. By the way, this, this, people really are convinced that this is a swing state. It's not. It's not. Texas is not a swing state. It, it's not. It swings from middle right to hard right. <laughs> that's that, that's really that's about it. I mean, it, it red did I yes. The, the John Corner I think just won by ten points. Okay, <laughs> like it's not close. It's, that's not that's not. A, yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe it's not twenty, but I mean, it's not close. Yeah, it's not close. It's not close. So, but but and even less than five is close. You know, like less than less than three. Less is than close. three is close. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> <laughs> nobody who wins, nobody who loses an election by five points is like, man, I almost got him. No, no, you didn't. You know, you, you weren't close. You're right. Three, yeah, three is yeah. so it, with margin of error, right? Yeah, what, yes. like within, two, within a little bit over two, two, two and a half, point, three, two three. point one. Yeah, yeah, margin of error. But, but it, once again, if you believe that this is a potential strategic stronghold in the future you as would a meet, demographic you would meet change, with this group you would of at people. least meet with people that represent your party in that state. No. Which begs a bunch of questions. Why not meet with him? If you really do I told believe you, Ivan, that why? He was one COVID. Oh, that's <laughs> probably part of it. <laughs> Touche. Why not all that COVID up Why there? not meet with them on Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I, I mean I think the reason why why you don't meet with them is because there's something about this whole situation yeah. that really doesn't smell right. Yeah. I mean, like there, there's something if if you are all in on vote and I look, I'll give Kamala Harris credit for this. If you're all in on voter suppression, you believe that it's really happening, when they come up, you better prioritize meeting with them. If that's what you're running on and that's what you believe is right, that's cool. But at the top of the ticket, if the captain of the team is not even willing to meet with people. Yeah. And, and to your point, Wesley, yeah, you don't want to get COVID. Sure, that's part of it. Get all the other people tested who were probably, and at least sit down with them. Yeah, Rendon, hey. How could you not sit down with them and say, "Hey, I under, I, I as the president am saying that I endorse what you're doing, and I think it's he hasn't even endorsed what they're doing." Or, or... speaking of team captain, speaking of team captain, uh oh, <laughs> you see what Tom Brady said at the White House? Did you see it? Yes, <laughs> yes, I did. Tom Brady. Went from the goat in my mind to just like absolute coolest person ever. He he's he's the coolest dude. Yeah. He's the coolest. He's hit his stride in his mid forties. That's what I'm trying Brendan, to do. He's still meet Brendan. That's what I'm trying still, to do. Still, he's still on this rocket ship. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, man. Okay, this guy this guy is a sort of Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos right now yeah. of life at forty. Yeah, forty four. Forty four. He, he's still that joke. He made in the delivery and just it was classic. Yes, and it was so good. Even Joe Biden had to like nod and laugh. Yes, it's so like, good. And what he say? He was like, he's like, yeah, you know, a lot of people didn't think we could do this. A lot of people didn't think that we could come back here and win a Super Bowl. Like I would say, like forty percent of the people, which is basically the same amount of people that didn't think you actually won the election. <laughs> His delivery. And the funny thing is, is that Tom Brady is in that 40%. <laughs> Hilarious. It was, it, it was, it was hilarious. Yeah. It, it, and, I, and I think it was actually why, you know, you go to this, this random political wonkies like us actually watch this stuff. But it was why I was even disappointed that, that Trump decided not to participate in the correspondence dinners. Yeah. Cause I think that they're so funny. There, it, like, it, like at some point, like let's not take ourselves too serious. That, like, let's, let's, that's, that's the let's, point I'm getting Let's to. have a couple jokes on each, on other people's behalf. That's like, the point I'm getting at. funny. Can we laugh please? Yeah. yeah. We, we said that a lot. Can we just laugh? Yeah. 
can we have a good time? Can we like laugh about some of this stuff? Yeah. It's so serious. Yeah. So it's so serious. Why so serious? <laughs> why so serious? <laughs> you know, like yeah. why are we why so serious? Yeah. Yeah. Like Tom Brady doing that mild thing, it was just like that brought guy some le- brought would, some levity to, it, to the situation. It, it brought some levity to all this. And you know what else I liked about it? And this goes to show you how we really have to be. I am consistent with what I've said about this once again for all sports and all athletes. And I'll be consistent about saying this about me. If Joe Biden invites me to the White House now, I'm going. He's a president of the United States. Yeah, he's POTUS. Like a, I served in the Obama administration as a White House fellow. Yes. When I was appointed, as I was very proud to serve and very proud to get a call and appointment from the President of the United States. I have had a problem with every one of the sports teams that decided to just not show up for Donald Trump. Ridiculous. And why did I have a problem with that? Yeah. Because it's, it's the president. It's the president of the United States, right? And like that's a part of the pageantry and being able to to win. And th- that's what you know what I pr- appreciate about Tom Brady. Tom Brady doesn't have to be a Biden guy. He was there. He was there. And we know he's a Trump guy. It's a guy. trip to the And we know he's a Trump it's a trip guy. To by the the way. White, it's a trip to the White and House. He was there. In honor of what you were able to accomplish you. with your team. As a team. So And once again, you're doing it as a team. Do you know what Joey Jones is? No. Joey Jones, um, um Marine, veteran, um a fo- he's a Fox correspondent. Oh, now, I know. Fox yes, yes, guy. yes, yes. Had both his had both his legs. Yes, both legs yeah, blown yeah, off. Blown off, yeah, yeah. Um, who is a patriot, who is a gentleman, and one of the one of the greatest guys I've, I've ever got to spend time around and meet. Awesome. And we've been we've been able to work on a project together over the course of the past you know few weeks by writing the song and working with an organization called Creative Vets to pair veterans with country songwriters and singers to make songs about our combat experience. And Joey's been amazing yeah. throughout this whole thing. One one quick story about Joey. He tells us he's a Republican. Okay. Yeah. He's a Republican from Georgia. He yeah. he is a hardcore Republican, and I, and I would never question his Republican chops ever. Just go watch him. Yeah. Trust me. He talks about President Obama coming to visit him in the hospital. Oh yeah, yeah. How impactful that was for him. He said, it's cool. How much he showed that he it's cared. Cool. It's cool. Yeah. It's all about who I voted for, Doesn't voted matter. for him or not. It's cool. Yeah. I'll tell you one of, one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Like literally, literally one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. So we were staying at a hotel. Um, in Austin, mm-hmm. a few about a, about a month ago, and I went up to the gym to go work out. Wait a minute, you went to the gym? I mean, I dabble, I dabble from time to time in the gym. Yeah, yeah. I, th- <laughs> I throw some weight around every now from and time again. to time, whatever, yeah. here and there. <laughs> go to the gym, and standing in front of the mirror with a pump and a sweat on, getting a sweat on, doing bicep curls, was was a man on two prosthetic legs. Mm. Standing in front of the mirror with his headphones in, and Joey's in very good shape, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's a sight that I'll never forget. It's awesome. And I walked in, I saw him, I just kind of looked at him for a while, watching him work out, work at sweat. And I thought to myself, standing, standing on prosthetic legs, I thought to myself, there is no excuse. Wow. There is no excuse. That sight will forever be, will forever be seared in my memory. Yeah. And in my brain, there is no excuse None. for mediocrity. None. There is no excuse <laughs> not to take care of yourself. When I saw Joey working out like that, life—it was actually a life-changing shot. For if you can't tell, yeah. it was a life-changing shot for me in my mind. Yeah. Caption: What's your excuse, huh? What's your excuse? Yeah. And he handles it with such grace. He's, I told him, I told him, I'm like, dude, he's like, man, whatever. He, he does like, he's just such a gentleman about it. Like, yeah, do whatever. Like, you know, life's hard for everybody, man, whatever. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. And even he, a guy like that, was literally just talking about how President Obama came to visit him and how, it's awesome. how cool that was. It's awesome. Cool, period. Well, it's understanding the shadow that you cast on society and on exactly. other people. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was with you. We're not going to go to White House because I don't like Trump. And I'm like, dude. Why? Okay. 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 Well, you know what? That's not going to help. It's not going to, it's not going to help <laughs> not. what you're trying to do in bringing people together. It's not. It's not going to help that. It's not. And once again, this goes back to, to one of these key points that we always keep coming to is 
What are you doing to help? Oh, politics is so divisive and blah, 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 blah. Why would you get into that? So do you have any Republican friends who you befriended, who you're talking to about their issues and why they see the world in a certain way? Wow. Because if you ask me, do I have have Democratic friends who I talk to all the time about their issues? All the time. I I have a number of of those people. All the time. Who I talk to all the time about what they're seeing, how they're seeing the world. Yes. And I try to think about how can we come together to do things in a better way. You know what I find hilarious, Brendan? People that have a friend in me on Facebook, and which is, I think, thank you a lot. I'm glad you did. On Facebook and on social media, they stopped following me. They have a friend in me. Because over the course of the past, like, decade, I've watched them post some real uber-liberal stuff that I fully disagree with and thought was flat-out wrong. But I was like, okay, that's their belief. Yeah. Well, it's, I'm, it's, not gonna, I'm not going to... Oh, well, then you have perspectives of multiple people. Not and you're, and, yep, yep. And you're and you're out of it's and you're, an, it's and you're another data your, point for me. And you're out of your echo chamber. So it's another data point for me. Yeah. Okay, cool. The second they found that I was running, I was gone. Yeah. I found that to be hilariously awesome. Well, it's 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 the word that that hilariously awesome. It's hilariously hypocritical. Yes. More alliteration. As if it's, as on, if, it's honestly hilariously hypocritical. It, <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> it's awesome. And, and I was, as, as and I'm like I'm like, as if as if you didn't think that I thought that some of your posts that you've done over the years was utterly ridiculous. As I watched it, but I didn't. I, I, I would see you out. We would chat, have a good time. Yeah, I buy you a drink. I give you a hug. Buy you a drink. Buy cool. you a drink. It's cool. Well, the the post didn't count unless it started with normally I don't post, but but and then vomit. <laughs> 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 I've always I've always wished that you could have like a red line there. Normally I don't fuss, then you can red line in. Then don't. Then don't. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Stop. Stop. Shut up. Stop it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, well, Brendan, I'll let you take us out, brother. I sure will. This is a a therapeutic session good, yeah, for my this day. Is good. This is too much. And fun, I really man. appreciate it. This isn't even and, work, man. Yeah, it's not work. And thanks for for all that listen to us. I hope that you can see the amount of fun that we have in here. Actually, yeah. So, as Willie Hunt would say, smiles are contagious, so make someone's day. God bless you. God bless you. Have a great week.